In this video, I will go over our top tips and stock photography strategies, how to correctly title and keyword your stock photos and videos to earn a passive income. My wife and I have been in the stock photography business since 2015, and we earn a living from it. Early on, we realized that properly supplying keywords and titles for our microstock content is the most valuable part in the stock photography business. Although many stock photographers consider it the most mind-numbing and boring task ever, without the proper description and keywords, your content will not sell, no matter how great it is. In this video, I use title and description interchangeably, because typically there's only one available at major stock photo agencies. Some stock photo agencies have title and description separately, but there are very few, with Getty images being one of them. Each stock photo platform has its limits on the number of symbols that are, can be input into the description. Typically, this ranges from 150 to 250 symbols, including white spaces. Keywords, or sometimes referred to as tags, are search terms that will also determine the discovery of your photos on search result pages. Typically, you are allowed to have up to 50 keywords for each stock image or video. Each photography keyword can be either one word or multiple words that will count as one keyword. The most important job for a stock photographer is to make sure that the stock photos and videos appear on the first three pages of search results. If content shows up later than three first three pages of search results, the likelihood that a buyer will click and buy your stock photos agencies goes down exponentially. There are many factors that will influence the ranking of your photos and videos and how they will show up on the first or much later search results pages. All stock photo agencies will create a separate page for your image and make it discoverable by the keywords, title, location if allowed, categories and even information from your model release. Later, your image will also rank based on how often it was shown to clients in search results clicked on and bought. While all these factors are very important for ranking of your stock photos and uh, videos, the most important factors are keywords and title. I also speculate that stock photo agencies likely correlate your title with keywords, meaning that having the most relevant keywords and just generally words in both keywords and title is very important. So how do we keyword and title our content? We often ask this question and the answer is we do it ourselves. We do not outsource this work to someone else because it comes with the risk of, well, first it's expensive and it comes with the risk of uh, you getting a bunch of generic keywords and title that will not likely reflect uh, the uniqueness of your photo or video. So that's why we, we like to do it ourselves and take a great care of uh, doing this work. And we also recommend that you do it yourself too. Whenever we begin keywording and titling, we always keep in mind the five W's, which are who or what is the subject in the photo or video? When was the content created? Where was it taken? What is happening in the photo or video? Why does it happen? This will guide you into finding the most appropriate keywords. We always start with Shutterstock's keyword tool. The way this tool works is that it allows you to input search terms and then select at least three similar images, illustrations or videos. After making your selection, the tool will supply the most relevant and less relevant keywords that you can choose from for your image. After including the most relevant keywords from Shutterstock's keyword tool, we come up with other tags that could be relevant. We always target 50 keywords because that is typically the maximum number of keywords. Of course, if we have nothing relevant to add, we may have fewer than 50 keywords. We typically consider the following factors for additional keywords for a stock image or video. First is location and date. Unless it is a generic subject, we almost always include the location of our content, such as the country, state or region, city and landmark name depicted in our content. It is important to be specific. Sometimes we include abbreviations of states, for example, FL for Florida. Quite often we research the location of a photo or video on Wikipedia to find additional keywords. If it is indoors, include the keywords indoors and interior. If the photo is taken outdoors, use keywords outside and outdoors. 
Also, under certain circumstances, specifying the year, month, or even date could be very important. For example, date of a particular March protest. Then people. If you have people present, include their age, gender, ethnicity, and how many of them there are. Also, if there is a certain mood or facial expression, include that too. For instance, happy, smiling, sad, depression. If there are no people present, include no people, nobody, or even empty if it is important for the content. Next is activity. If there is an activity happening, describe it in simple terms, such as running, kayaking, skiing, or swimming. Then consider season and time of day. If you take a lot of landscape images and videos, adding a season to your keywords could be important. Also, is it sunrise or dawn? Is it morning, day or night? Also, think about main objects in your content. Include keywords that describe the main objects depicted in your image or video. Is it a mountain or rolling hills landscape? Is it an animal or a plant? Besides generic keywords, be more specific and include keywords that are unique to your content. For instance, consider the names of mountains, names of landmark in English, or transliteration in English if the name is written in foreign language, and scientific names for plants and animals in Latin. Consider then concepts in your content. If your imagery is conceptual, add keywords that describe this concept, for instance, freedom, depression, disease, religion, politics. Color tones could be important too. If your image has certain colors that dominate and would be of interest to a buyer, consider including them. For instance, if you have a photo of a bedroom interior with beige colors of walls and bedding, include neutral, beige and color as part of your keywords. Finally, is there a particular technical data associated with your image? This refers to what photographic technique you used when you took a particular shot. For instance, is it wide-angle view, close-up or macro? Is it high-angle aerial view or ground level? It could also be a profile or side view, panorama or HDR shot. If you have blurry background, you can include bokeh, blur or blurred background and defocused. Also, if you submit stock footage, there could be keywords specific to how you recorded this video. Among the keywords we regularly use are time-lapse or time-lapse, rec focus, shallow depth of field, point of view or POV, zoom in or zoom out, slow motion or slow more, vehicle shot and handheld shot. There is one more tool that we recently started using and it is Dropstock IO keyword search tool. This one comes as free but you have to create an account for it which is also free. And it will allow you to cross check your keywords and see if you if there's anything else that you miss while doing Shutterstock keyword tool. The tool is useful for identifying missing keywords for an image or video after going through the Shutterstock keyword tool. Dropstock IO keyword tool not only shows relevant keywords for a particular search term, but also ranks each keyword based on views and sales. This is helpful to identify if you are missing a keyword that is relevant to your image and can help improve the sales prospects of your image. When you come up with keywords for your content, there are several considerations to keep in mind. First, use multi-word keywords. We frequently use multiple words for one keyword. For instance, instead of having New and Mexico as two separate keywords, consider having just New Mexico, if your photo was taken in the state of New Mexico. If you use two separate keywords, your image may show up if someone searches for the country of Mexico, which is not what you want. However, by using multiple word keywords, you will not only indicate the appropriate location of your image, but also have one extra tag to add. The next issue is whether you should use singular or plural forms of a keyword. Certain stock photo agencies discern singular versus plural forms of words. Among them is Alamy. Google tells the difference between plural and singular forms too. So if someone searches for a cat image versus cat's image, on Google, they would see different results. Other agencies such as Adobe Stock and Shutterstock do not tell the difference. I tried to search point 5 for singular versus plural forms of a word and it seems that it tells the difference. When you keyword your stock photos or videos, always include the most appropriate uh, form. So if you have one dog, include just dog. Or if you have multiple dogs, include dogs. You can include also the form for a keyword that's perhaps not appropriate for your image. So if you have one dog, you can include dogs as well. 
However, be, be, sh be aware that it may come at the expense of uh, poor rankings for your image later. If the stock photo agencies that can tell the difference between singular and plural will start uh, down ranking uh, your image because uh, there's no, uh, there are only one dog, but it shows up under the dog's uh, search results and nobody clicks on it or buys it, it will start pushing this image or video later and later uh, in the search results pages. The next consideration is which form for a verb to use. Well, many resources on internet advise you to indicate only infinitive uh, form for a verb, such as uh, run, eat, climb, or walk. I would disagree with that. There are many stock photo agencies that can actually tell the difference between, you know, eat or eating, or run or running. Those are Alami, and I also checked, seems like Pond5 also tells the difference. Moreover, Google can tell the difference as well. So if you're searching for dog, walk versus dog walking, there will be different results that produce this uh, search term query. So in our case, we decided to include both forms, meaning the infinitive form, which is eat, drink, uh, run, walk, as well as uh, present participle or also called uh, gerund form, which is running, walking, eating, and uh, sleeping. And this will make sure that our results, uh, our stock photos or videos will produce uh, similar results and will show up under both run or running queries when the buyer searches for our image or video. Another thing to consider is to reuse your uh, keywords and titles from the images that you already have. As we started building our portfolio, uh, we noticed that uh, certain new photos would have a common theme to our photos that we, or videos that we already have. So we started reusing some of the keywords and titles and of course we would change uh, those to make sure that they're most relevant. Some people use Adobe uh, Lightroom presets for keywords. So they will create like a list of uh, keywords and then they can copy and paste those uh, key preset key keywords to uh, like a set a batch of images, uh, I guess maybe videos as well. We don't do that because we treat each uh, stock photo or new stock video individually and uh, work on it to make sure that it has the most relevant keywords. So we don't worry about the presets in our case. So there is a fast and easy way to find your images and copy paste those keywords. If you submit your images to Alamy, you probably know that they accept almost all, if not all the images you submit to them. This makes it easy to search for an image with specific tags in your entire portfolio through their Alamy image manager, and then copy and paste keywords from a similar piece of content. Because Alamy doesn't accept footage at this time, we use Pond5 instead to find similar videos by keywords and then copy-paste keywords from there. Also, if you submit your content to Getty Images, you probably know that you will have to disambiguate your keywords. Uh, to our knowledge, uh, Getty Images is the only stock photo agency that requires this and because they have their own uh, predetermined um, keyword system. This means that you cannot just supply Getty with your keywords and move on. Instead, you have to go through and choose a more precise suggestion for a particular keyword from a list that they provide. Let's suppose you have a keyword, Aspen, referring to a tree common in Colorado. Getty will give you 10 suggestions to choose from, such as Aspen Colorado, Aspen Tree, Aspen Leaf, among many others. Doing so, they force you to choose the exact term that you intended to. So, if you meant Aspen tree, you would choose that. In case you skip this step, the keyword will not be used. Typically, you have to do that for over half of all your keywords, more than 25, for each stock photo and video. I would say that this is the most annoying thing when it comes to submitting your content to Getty Images, because it takes a lot of our time. Another consideration is to put the most important keywords first. When you prepare a list of your keywords, make sure to put the most important keywords, at least 10 or 15, at the very beginning. This becomes important later when you submit your content. Adobe Stock uses a hierarchy of keywords where tags that appear first are given priority in ranking on search results pages. Also, Alamy wants you to identify the so-called 10 super tags, which are keywords that will rank most during the search. Putting the most important keywords at the very beginning will make tagging these super tags an easy matter. 
The next thing to talk about is how to title your stock photos and videos. When we title our content, we typically keep the number of symbols under 150. After you finish keywording your content, it is much easier to write a title since you already know what's important. The title should read as a regular sentence describing exactly what's depicted using the 5 W's strategy I mentioned above. Make sure that each title starts with 7 to 10 of the most relevant keywords that you identified before. This is important because these first 7 or more words from your title become part of the URL or link for your stock photos or videos web page and will, will be part of the ranking on Google. I want to emphasize the importance of title for search engines because that's primarily how they discover your stock content. And why does it matter? Because these days people still search for stock images and perhaps video. And once they discover the content on a search engine, they will then go to Shutterstock or Adobe Stock and buy it there. And it's important because they will likely be one-time buyer as opposed to subscription-based customers. And one-time sales, they command bigger dollar amounts. And as a result of that, you will get a higher cut from that sale. Lastly, always check your title and keywords for any misspellings. Before you finalize your title and keywords, Check that there are no misspellings. It happens to us all the time. There are numerous online free spell checkers that will flag misspellings. So now that I covered how to title and keyword stock photos or videos, let's go over one specific example of how we actually would do it. Consider this image of Ice Lake in Colorado that I would like to create title and keywords for. First, I go to my Shutterstock keyword tool and provide the search terms Ice Lake Colorado and select at least three images with the closest resemblance and hit the Add All button. Because I see that there are many other images that do not necessarily depict the ice lake I intended to, I narrow my search by adding the search word Silverton, since I know that this lake is located near the mining town of Silverton, Colorado. This produces the following search results. The next step for me is to go to Wikipedia or similar resources to check if there is any additional information and keywords I'm missing about Ice Lake. Because there was no Wikipedia page for this lake, I went to the US National Forest page and read it to see if I missed anything. For now, all the keywords I have are good enough. The next step is to go to Dropstock.io keyword research tool and input Ice Lake Colorado as a search term. I chose 37 keywords that potentially may be useful. Likely most of them are just duplicates of what I already have in Shutterstock's keyword tool. I copy and paste these 37 keywords into Shutterstock keyword tool and get 60 keywords. Note that going to Dropstock.io is not a necessary step and we rarely go there unless the stock photo or video is a special one and we think that researching keywords for it would be worth the time. After copying and pasting keywords from Dropstock.io, I have 60 keywords, so I need to go through and delete 10 keywords irrelevant for my image. This process involves some judgment and I chose these 10 keywords to remove highlighted in bold red. The thought process here is to remove any duplicate or irrelevant keywords. In my case, I do not have cloud, river or tree in the image. Since I have both outdoors and outdoor, I delete outdoor. Also, I have rocky and mountains and rocky mountains. Therefore, I will remove rocky mountains. Also, I have a keyword San Juan, separate from the keywords national and forest. Because there are seven San Juan mountains and San Juan national forest. So, if someone searches for either of those or simply mountains, my photo should show up in the search results. Then cold, adventure, tourism, vacation and natural are two generic keywords and can be removed. At the end I have 50 keywords. Next I quickly rearrange the keywords with the most important ones at the forefront by retyping them into Shutterstock keyword tool, which puts these tags first without duplicating them. Also I do a quick spell check and the final product looks like this. Next is title or description. I target 150 symbols. The title for this image is Ice Lake Silverton, Colorado in San Juan National Forest with Rocky Mountains in summer and panorama view. Notice how I put the most important keywords at the beginning and the total symbol count with spaces is 111. When you keyword and title your stock content, you can accomplish certain tasks in batches such as spell checking. In conclusion, as you start 
keywording and titling your stock photos and videos. You may be slow at first, at least we were. But then with time, as with anything else, you will start getting the hang of it and improving your time that you, it takes for you to keyword those and title photos. And then later, you will start to brainstorm the areas with, which take the most time and find your own shortcuts or efficiencies. What is your approach to creating titles and keywords for your stock content? Please let us know in the comments section, as we are very eager to know what other fellow photographers do. Also, if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. In the future, we'll have more YouTube videos that will talk about all things related to stock photography and how to succeed in it.